Hi, welcome everybody. Uh, today we've got Shrenik in helping with moderation again uh, in the chat. So if you've got any questions, ask him and uh, he'll pass them on to me and I'll come and check it later on as well. If um, Sean's in the house, thank you for joining me on Patreon. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, let's crack on with what's happening tonight. Uh, I'm going to be doing the lamp. I think I told you that. I started this um, perhaps a month ago, not quite sure. And got to a certain stage, I couldn't find a lamp holder. I've got a lamp holder for it now, still under lockdown, so I managed to scrounge this off a lamp that was in the house. And my intention today uh, was to make the lampshade for it. I can't do all of that for certain reasons, but uh, we'll get on with some of it. And there was a suggestion in one of the, the streams I did about the lamp, uh, the last one I think it was, that I should use uh, or try using shavings for the lampshade. So uh, we're going to be doing that. I collected some shavings around about the time and they all came out um, rather curled up as they normally do. I never really bother about the state of my shavings, they normally go straight in the fire. Uh, but very curled up, which is a bit difficult to make other than perhaps a chandelier um, around the lamp. So, uh, and that's not what I want, unlike something flat. So, uh, a little later on, I'm going to show you how I turn a curly shaving like that into something nice and flat and uh, able to do something with it. So, that's coming up later. How am I actually going to build the shade? What's it going to look like? Uh, well, hopefully, I can show you that over on SketchUp. So this is my. I find it. I find it quite hilarious that I. I said it as a joke, and you've taken it seriously and actually gone with it. Was it you, Shrenit? Yeah, I said it as a joke. Ah, <laughs> I can remember you or Paul or someone had said it anyway. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and do it. Somebody point. I think it was Paul pointed me towards another channel who had done um, a lampshade with shavings, and I did check that out, and I followed on and found another one as well. Uh, so I'm going to do it completely differently. They used um, epoxy and they used laminating it onto um, acrylic. I'm going to try and go the 100% wood way. Um, there will be glue in the whole lamp. I've already used glue. And the electrics will be obviously cables and plastics and what have you. But the rest of the thing will be um, pretty much just all glue. <laughs> Not all glue. What am I talking about? All wood. So I've got to work out how to do that with shavings. And uh, this is the kind of design that I'm, I'm hoping to go for. It's fairly simple. Um, the one I'm going to make for the shade is a frame. And I want some input from you. My first thoughts were to have it as this frame, square frame, top and front, top and bottom, uh, with an extending arm, as you can see here, going clockwise round. The other option is to have crossed arms, no arms at the end, or with it going anti-clockwise. So you tell me in the comments what you think would look best, and I'll uh, I'll try and follow that. The shavings, which are difficult to see on here, um, they were becoming almost certainly vertical, probably overlapped. They do allow quite a bit of light through, so I may do um, two layers of them and my intention would be to glue them on the inside of the frame which isn't obvious on this picture that was just a, a stretch too far to me to do in the time I had but hopefully it will look okay it may be taller than this and it probably will be maybe slightly narrower but uh, I'll work that out as I go along so any comments on that most welcome Let's go back and have a little look at, uh, at the lamp and how I'm going to do this frame. So I've prepared some pieces here, about uh, three quarters of an inch by a quarter of an inch. Got eight pieces, so I'm going to use four at the top, four at the bottom. As I say, how they're laid out be entirely up to you, as long as you're sensible with your suggestions. So we're making a square with that. That's going to have to hang. 
Um, in the design, I had it hanging at the top of the wooden base. And with one lamp holder, the most obvious place to suspend it from is up here, uh, which is part way up the fitting, because there's a, a screw fitting for a, a shade. So a slight deviation from the, the plan and what I just showed you, I'm gonna have to have uh, arms coming down to the base of the shade and then the shade hanging a bit lower. Uh, that's something I'm gonna to start today, uh, this evening, and uh, crack on with that. Those two frames are gonna be separated by these thin pieces, sticks that I planed up earlier. Uh, they're about the size of um, I suppose chopsticks, the thin end of chopsticks, so quite thin, but obviously vertically they'll be uh, stout, they're sound enough, and I'll mortise them into the frames, top and bottom. Mitch, I think so far the consensus is uh, to uh, cross the frame and uh, make a nice cross at the corner. Cross like so. Let me find somewhere better to cross like that. So I you'll should have to wait. You'll have, you'll have to wait 30 seconds for me, for me to be able to see it. Yeah, we'll, we'll check that later on, but I think the consensus seems to be a cross like that in every corner. So we'll, uh, we'll try that. If things change yeah. before the end of the stream and the, the voting goes a different way, then uh, I'll just follow whatever it is. So to make this... Um, connector to the lamp, I planed up a couple of bits of scrap and this might just end up being a prototype and I may have to uh, to remake it in something a bit better but this should work. I was going to put, let's come back here so you can see it, so I'm going to have a little shelf going through the, the coupling on the lamp and then a couple of short arms with um, probably finger joints just angled out, one on each side, and then that will attach to the frame. Uh, probably with something like a bird's mouth joint. So I was going to start just doing a bit of finger jointery. And uh, that will be what I do first, and later on, don't forget, I'll be straightening out my curly shavings. So, and this is a method uh, I haven't seen it, um, but it, I'm sure people have done it, it's very simple, but you won't know what it is until later on. So let me get on with doing some finger joints. I'm going to try and do these in a very simple way, as I say this is probably going to be a prototype. I will mark out probably, I'll do it in pen and you might be able to see what I'm doing. The idea is to paint the lamp so nobody's going to see this at the end of the day. Because uh, it's going to be diagonal, I want quite long fingers and then I can trim off all the excess later on. Now do any of you... Um, subscribe to furniture and cabinet making because I had mine through today and I've got uh, an article in there this time. I've read a couple of editions of it but I've never subscribed to it, maybe I should. They have um, e-magazines or they have paper copies. They've changed the format now, the paper copies are very smart, but uh, it's, it's quite a bit more expensive. Uh, Paul's asking, uh, what do you hold? I just used a bench dock. Uh, are you talking about the, the tiny uh, bits? Currently. Go on. Paul's talking about these uh, small bits and the bits for the frame, then uh, I did actually record a little bit of video on that. So let's just have a look at that. So this was just cutting up the 
the frame members to begin with. So I'll skip past that because you don't really need to see me sawing pieces down. And I took them over to the shooting board just to square the ends up. I think initially I tried to do, or I did try to do all of them together and uh, all eight was just a little bit too much for my hand. So I separated them out. The, um, we've got an issue with the video, it keeps freezing and buffering. Yeah, it's not great quality this end, so it's probably this. So I was just squaring the ends off there, and then later on, to plane them up on their widths, I used the, actually the shooting board, a little packer underneath to make them high enough. So I just plane them all, ganged up next to each other. And then, later on, if it catches up, these are the little sticks. So just using the bench dog, and again, ganging those up. And they won't necessarily be um, perfectly dimensioned all the same, but they will be mortised in uh, individually, one in each of the uh, eight corners. So, no problems with that. Oh, that's a really clever technique where you're um, stacking all the pieces together to plane them to the same width. Doesn't always get exactly the same width. And what I, I did do was I shuffle one from one side to another. Uh, so when I when I planed um, maybe half a dozen strokes, I move one piece from one end over to the other side and, and then plane again. And I keep checking that the thicknesses are the same and uh, you get very accurate, uh, well, I tend to get very accurate results like that. Okay, so let's get back to what I was doing. Uh, lucky I recorded that. Uh, yeah, Mitch, before we get to that, we've got a question here from Robert. Uh, he's asking, what's the V notch on the back of the shooting board? Ah, uh, that was when I was using it on my other bench, uh, where to clamp it onto the bench, I had to put uh, an F clamp uh, a certain position, it had to come closer to my um, the fence on the shooting board, so I just needed a little gap to, to take the arm of the F clamp. It's nothing, nothing special. But well spotted, I suppose uh, it could have been something uh, rather ingenious, but it's not. Okay, I want to divide this up. Uh, I'll use what I've got here. I still haven't moved everything from either work. I'm lazy this week. So it just happens to be 70mm, so I'll do them into 10mm spacings roughly. completely screwing up and ignore the notifications that keep popping up on my computer. I usually do. It's probably going to tell me that the battery is going to go flat and suddenly I'll disappear. For those of you who what we were filming yesterday if you haven't seen uh, the video, I was trialling doing um, Zoom or some other media tutorials. I think your internet's not having a good night because
your audio is cutting out even on the call with me here. And the stream keeps buffering. Uh, let me look at the YouTube page. Oh yeah, I do see a, a slight problem there. Obviously a lot of people at home tonight using all the bandwidth available. Well then, with problems tonight to, to try and pause this one and recommence it on Monday. Oh, it's telling me at the moment it's got excellent connection and then the next minute it's uh, disappearing. If you can get a wired connection from your internet router, it'll be very stable compared to this. Yes, that's currently about um, maybe 15 metres minimum away. You can get a 15 metre cable. I've only got a 10 metre one. <laughs> yeah, I might have to get a longer one. Bit of a trip hazard, but maybe that'd be the way forward. Uh, I think you can continue because we've still got questions coming in. Um, Lego Man's asking, he's noticing uh, a sore plane float kind of contraption on the bottom right of the bench. What is that exactly? I think he's talking about your knife, which is next to your measure tape. Ah, this one here. Well, I'll hold it up yeah. a little later if you say that's what you're asking about. That's a knife, marking knife that I made. I'm sure there must be a video on it um, sometime last year, I believe. Well, I'll continue, and uh, if you ever chat, if things disappear, you can't see the picture. I'll get on with this, and what I shall try and do is record it, um, and then I can always put it up for watching separately. So if all goes wrong, the rest of this should be recorded. Thing to do first. Benchuk. I don't know how long these need to be, so I'll just uh, roughly divide it in half. up with those ends. And they want to be, where's my saw gone? Roughly that far away. That 
that's the outside, that's the inside. Okay, Paul says you sharpened that saw, I think it's your, uh, your tenant saw, which was blunt last time we saw you use it. I have sharpened it, yeah. I do what I'm told. So I'm doing a little turn at saw cuts now in the matching board. Now I've confused myself. That's it, I think. Absolutely. So, Lego Man's um, asking uh, for, it, for your opinion. Um, um, he's recently acquired an 18th century plane and he needs some wood added to it. Should he? Want to make it stand out like a sore thumb? Doing that, though, you probably devalue it. Maybe doing any work on it might devalue it. <laughs> Is that a good enough answer? I don't know. He says it's for personal use uh, and that it needs some wood added to the sole and it needs a new wedge. Uh, well, my question to Lego Man is where does it need wood added to the sole? Uh, is the mouth just too wide? Is the mouth worn? And uh, about the new wedge, just make a wedge. I mean, you're, you're going to make it's not original But, um, I mean, you can have some, you can experiment with trying to match the colors. That's really helpful. Uh, practice for restoring other things if you're restoring furniture in the future. Take it as a, take it as a, a chance to, um, take it as a chance to experiment. I guess, if you're not too worried about the actual value of the tool. Yeah, and I guess depending on how much you pay for it in the first place and what its potential value is. Mitch, he lost, he missed everything that you said in buffering. <laughs> well, I, I was saying if I was, uh, had a, if I acquired a plane and I was going to be using it, then I would just tidy it up to the point where um, I felt happy using it. I wouldn't be concerned about um, making it look the same as old. 
And I, but I wouldn't want to make the new work stand out like a sore thumb either. The key thing for me would be trying to grain match and use the same type of wood that, that the tool is made from. And if it's just the mouth uh, of the plane, for example, that's, uh, that's worn out, you don't need to replace a whole sole, you don't need to laminate another sole to it. You no. can just cut out a, uh, you can basically box the mouth, which is where you cut out the small, shallow, almost like inlaying a piece of wood into the mouth of the plane. But if you do it as a dovetail patch, it's less likely to, um, to, to come out. Is it, um, did I hear, it's a wooden sole plane? Uh, yeah, it sounds like it's a wooden plane. So it's worn plane. down and that's the problem they're having. I guess. Yeah, you can just box the sole, you don't need to laminate it sole onto it because opening up the mouth and the sole is more complicated than the boxing the mouth I mean. I can't remember a uh, Lego man. Are you uh, in the unplugged woodworkers group? You'll probably get an awful lot of advice if you were in there. from people who are more, um, certainly a lot more knowledgeable on old tools than I am. Just extending my saw cuts to the, the right depth. Both sides. I tend to find it's a bit quicker if I uh, saw them quickly, then take everything apart and turn them around the other way. I used to use a mirror, but uh, I've lost that during the move. A mirror in front of my work so I can see what's going on on the back side. saw the, the comment made by um, was it Peter about the mortar sink stools that I finished off in the last stream. He uh, said, apart from the gussets, they look very much like the saw horses he made years ago and used to, um, to build coffins on top of. Discipline, I will actually knife the bits I'm going to chisel out. If I can remember at least which ones they were. So it's those. That one's joining on to there. The 
just trying to figure out now whether it's going to work. No, it might do. state there. That and that and that. The importance of marking the correct waste that one, take that one out. Take that one out. That one out. That one out. Mitch, it was quite interesting when you uh, told me to mark the waste yesterday uh, during uh, during my lesson with you. I've never ever marked the waste before and I've never made that mistake. Well, what can I say? You're, you're either a natural at that sort of thing, or um, lucky. I think that? I'm lucky. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just never, it's just never be, really been, um, it's never been something I ever did, and then um, I seem to have been fine so far. So far, I think, is the uh, the thing. You, If you don't mark the waste, and in future you make that mistake, you'll kick yourself. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Paul says I'm a freak. <laughs> He's not far off. <laughs> but the thing is, if you're using Purple Heart, don't you have to mark all of it? No, if you mark all of it, everything else will start curdling up. <laughs> Jim tried convincing me that if I used Alfie Shine on Purple Heart, it'll start curdling. <laughs> I was having an interesting conversation today about, um, you know, people get so bogged down around measuring the thickness of plate shavings. And I was just thinking that, you know, I've never ever picked up a plate shaving and used a pair of calipers to measure the exact thickness of the plate shaving that I'm taking. And I, you know, the reason behind that is always that I'm not interested in the shaving that I'm taking, I'm interested in the end product and the board itself. So I always check if the board's flat, if the board is smooth, but I never check my plane shavings to see how thin they are. Do you ever... What's your thoughts? What's your thoughts on that? Well, do you ever check the thickness of the board? Yes, but not with a pair of calipers, because wood moves, the thickness of a board with a pair of calipers is probably not necessary. Ah, well, there we are. That's my opinion. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I definitely use calipers, or have done in the past. But having used them, I kind of got a, a feel for it now that I can tell. Um, so, if I want to take a couple of thou off something, I'll know what my shavings are like just by taking a sample shaving somewhere. Oh, that's a thou, or that's a thou and a half, and I'll know how many shavings to take off what I'm trying to adjust. Uh, but that's when you're doing sort of tight torrents engineering with wood. Um, and as you say, it will move over time, but all of it will move over time. If you want a really tight joint, and you're trying to make it so it, it's, it's nice and slips together but is tight, then you might be taking just a, a couple of thousand shavings off. But does it matter if it's, you know, I mean, you, you're telling me now that you don't use calipers anymore to measure the thickness of your shavings. We don't actually find it matters if it's a thousand or 
um, one and a half now. I mean, if, if you're measuring that, your... That tolerance is not really going to make that much of a difference, will it? If you were trying to match something, a drawing, for different components, and you wanted to match what it says, then to get within a thou of it would seem reasonable. of an inch at least if not more and you'll end up with a tight joint anyway and you won't notice it I guess there's an argument for that but then again if you glue something together such that you you're hoping for the wood to, to swell up and then stick and then once it's stuck and the, the water's dissolved, well, the water's evaporated, then the wood is then under tension trying to pull apart. That's possible. So there's always arguments <laughs> either way. of these fingers and I think I'll move on to something else because my hands are aching and this is getting a bit uh, tedious. settle down yet or we still keep buffering uh, the stream hasn't really buffered in, in quite a while now it's ah, not stable that's good sounds like uh, whoever was using it before has gone to bed <laughs> I don't think it was in in my house particularly although I, I suppose the uh, Skybox might have been downloading something. Yeah, everyone's everyone's saying it's quite stable now. Cool. on the, the back scene, Julie had the Pfizer one yesterday. Yeah, that's good news, now you've both been vaccinated. Yeah, and she had the um, classic sore arm response to it. So I think she got off lightly compared to what I had. Yeah, my, my grand was just saying that you know, it almost felt like a pinprick for a day and that was it. We still have no idea which one she had. <laughs> you mentioned um, stopped grooves, didn't you, Shrenet? Was something you had to do. Yeah. Was, was that something you yeah. uh, felt would be good to do for a video? Yeah, I'd be more than happy to, and I can. Um if you're happy, I can do it on my project piece. I feel I feel more confident doing it. Um, 
but I'm happy for, for you to show me how to do it. So what does the, what's the consensus view of those watching tonight? Uh, it, do you think a new video teaching Shredding how to cut a stopped groove would be good? It's basically a stopped housing joint to, to hold a shelf piece. Yeah. Was that just a, a standard one or a dovetail housing? Just a standard one for now. Okay. I think the next one will be a dovetail. I'm not ready for that just yet. A stopped dovetailed housing joint would be quite challenging. And tapered. Uh, even more challenging. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> to make it stop at the right point. So we have some fingers, and they look healthier than my fingers. Right, was I going to do the joining ones? Don't tell me I've cut the wrong ones off. exactly you're doing right now. Uh, would you mind explaining what part of the lampshade that you're making? I think oh, you okay. did stop. But... Yeah, I get you. So, if you see the lamp here, the shade, um, or well, the fitting for the shade is up here in the middle of the lamp holder. Um, but my frame is going to be either up at the top or somewhere down here. So I need to go from this point down, I think, to where the, the bottom of the frame is to support it. So I'm going to fit this piece in here, which I think I might even be able to screw on. Cloud is asking, uh, and I'm going to ask the same question as well. Yeah. Why aren't you dovetailing it? Why are you cutting finger joints? Because I don't know what angle I want them to be at the end. So I don't know uh, whether I want them to go like that, and you'll see this in a minute, or like that. So basically I'm creating uh, a finger hinge, knuckle joint if you will, almost. And when I finish my frame I can adjust it find the angle I want to get me the height for the bottom of the frame and once I've found that then I can glue them in position and I can cut them at the right width for the frame to attach to them. So I hope that uh, explains it. I kind of think I know what I mean in my own head. Oh yeah, if I knew it, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that could have been really interesting. The other thing Quite is... Because uh, you'd, uh, you'd have two dovetails on the long grain, wouldn't you? Um, well, it's never going to be end to end. It's never going to be flat. So there'll always be some cross grain going on. But anyway, I digress. That's what the, uh, those parts are going to be for. So I'll crack on and get those done uh, before the next stream. 
how am I going to flatten the shavings? And it's the point you've all been waiting for, isn't it? Be honest with me. Well, first of all, let's just see how um, bright the light is as it comes through a shaving. Because that gives us an idea of how many shavings we need. Should we, should we let everyone guess how you do it? Yeah, guess. Well, I have a guess. Right, how many shavings? I much earlier, so I'm going to jump in first and think, I think you're going to iron it. Ah, could I be ironing it? I thought you were going to guess how many shavings it took to block the light. <laughs> no, no, guess, guess how you're making the shavings flat. So I'm just turning off some lights so you can see how dark it gets. Whoa. Energy saving bulb, of course. Um, not sure you have them in the States. So here's a shaving. So you can see it takes the glare off, but it doesn't uh, completely obscure the light. So I think that would look quite nice. If we go for two thicknesses, perhaps at right angles. Woodwork learner has guessed that you've uh, used glue to flatten the shavings. Ah, wow. I shall reveal all. Let's put some lights back on. I'll reveal all now that the lights are out and then I'll cover up and put the lights on. So I'm all covered up again. You've missed the big reveal. So I can tell you that somebody was right. In fact, both of you are right, really, because what is it that holds wood together? Anybody? Um, it's things it's, like lignin. I think it's the tannins inside the wood. The lignin and stuff like that. So, yeah, sorry, not tannins, lignin. So if we, and effectively what is the lignin to the wood, it's the glue, I suppose, in a, in a vague sort of way. Oh, so you did it like paper mache. So you wet the wood and put it down flat, and then you put it between two boards for weight. I'm leaving in suspenders for a bit, aren't I, whilst I put my chisels away? You really are being quite suspenseful there. <laughs> oh, these are what they are, Shrenik. I, uh, I never know how to pronounce it. So they're the, oh, pointing at the wrong camera, how stupid. What an amateur mistake. They're the chisels I was using yesterday. Oh, the file chisels, yeah. Yeah. So, I've got myself some old bit of melamine covered chipboard. Got myself my curly shavings. A bit of water, which is going to act as... A thermal carrier. So you can probably guess, since I said both of you were kind of right, I've also got an iron. So it's my turn to do the ironing tonight. I shall take my curly shaving. Well, I haven't unravelled this. I hope you haven't stolen the white, the, the house iron. It isn't the house iron. I wouldn't dare. I still steal the house iron without telling mum. <laughs> so the advantage of using the melamine is 
the shavings, although they're quite springy, with the water they do actually stick with the surface tension of the water down to the board most of the time because it won't now because I'm trying to do this live oh, and this shaving is too short for the lamp anyway look at that, it's broken and now I'll take a piece of paper quite up to temperature but you get the idea a little bit of steaming now I think my shavings were maybe fractionally thinner on one side or the other but uh, I'm not going to get my calipers out to check the reason I say that is it's got a slight twist in it You can see I'm a dab hand with the iron. And there we have a almost flat shaving, not quite. Let's keep drying it. So what we've done, or what I believe we've done, because I'm no scientist, but I think we've slackened the lignin, allowing the wood to be easily bent, and that's using the water and the heat and then sort of dried it out, dried the water out with the iron and possibly if I left it pressed uh, to cool it would be even better but uh, we end up with a shaving which will be absolutely fine to glue on top and bottom of the frame um, um, Woodwork Turner says that's a very old iron <laughs> It is an old iron, any old iron, any any, any old iron No, that was it, that was the trick. That's, you waited just to see that simple trick, so I'm sorry for keeping you in suspenders for that one. I'll just carry on, I've got about 60 to do, so uh, make yourself comfortable. Oh, another one looks rubbish, too short. Lego Man asks, do you reckon this also works with veneer? I think it does, and I think it, I've seen it done with veneer before, really thin veneers which have rippled. To flatten them, to wet them, and then iron them. But you have to make sure you wet both sides with the veneer. From yeah. what I've seen, one one of the um, the ways I've tried myself is a very dilute glue solution, adhesive solution, sprayed on, and then press them. But yeah, I don't see why just ironing with water wouldn't help. I wouldn't try it with an expensive veneer, I wouldn't probably try it with a uh, something that you desperately need to keep. If you're going to try it, try it on something rubbish, so an old piece of sapili veneer or mahogany veneer. Can, can I just point out that I think it's really fitting that you've got a Dettol bottle at the moment to spray the water. Nice, isn't it? It's because of the virus, you know. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> it's my fake Dettol. I sell it on the side. It's just water, but people like it. Well, you get the idea. You saw it happen live in front of you. Flat shavings. With nothing but heat and water. telling everyone it was Dettol. Well, yeah, I mean, it might have been Dettol, but, you know, I'm not saying. So, I don't know whether you've had enough, folks. I know I probably have. Do you have any more questions? Do you have any more comments? I think I'll stop recording now and if you say the stream was alright that's excellent
So now's my chance to actually see what you've said and see what Shrenik's kept back. Uh, whether there's dreadful comments about how my ironing really doesn't match up to the wife's. And I can see... I know about that, Mitch. I was going to ask you if we can do one of, the, one of your lessons on ironing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it must have been quite a, quite a boring stream tonight because there's an awful lot of chat. That seems to go that way. If, if it's entertaining and uh, people are learning stuff, they don't chat. But there seems to be a lot of chat in there tonight. <laughs> so, good evening to... Well, it's just good evening to Shredder. Evening, Robert, Paul... Woodwork Learner, who, oh gosh, I do know your name, I just can't bring it to mind. Um, Andy. Lego Man. Andy, yeah. I'm at a slight disadvantage because I, I do have quite a lot of people on YouTube with strange usernames and I just cannot remember everybody's. I'm lucky if I can remember a couple that have got strange names. What's my, what's my name again? <laughs> On YouTube, your name is Shrenix Banner. I think I've probably covered everybody. Mine, there was a lot going on. And Jeepers, you've stayed most of the distance, I think. Or have you, or Claudio as well. Hi, Claudio. Uh, I'm trying to think as well about the, the idea for doing joints and how to select which joint I should do in a future stream. Uh, I've been going through my box of joints that I made when I was doing the joints series. Um, what I'm probably going to do is get some of those um, going from reasonably simple up to very complex and then uh, do some sort of uh, where you will vote for one or other and as it goes up the scale, as it builds up, when you get up to a certain total then I'll do that joint. Um, I'll try and work that out so it's ready for next time. And then I'll put a big chart on the back wall there and you'll be able to see how close you're getting to having a joint actually made. Another thing I could do as well, um, and Paul knows about this, I've acquired a number three which I believe must now be safe having gone through quarantine on my bench here we go as delivered a number three which uh, is looking a bit sad and uh, needs a bit of attention and what I'll be doing with this is what no collector would do with it. I'll be making it into a very usable plane. So I may do, if you're interested, some of that work in the live streams and uh, some of it for a longer pre-recorded video of the whole process. Mitch, if, is, have you got a 3D printer by any chance? I don't have a 3D printer. I was only asking because you know your um, the, the handle is cracked. The the handle. Yeah. Yeah. So you can actually buy. Uh, so you can actually online. Someone has produced a clamp, a three D printable clamp, for the handle of the plane, which gives you perfect the perfect angle for clamping pressure to glue it back up. Oh. Interesting. I will send you a link to that if you have anyone that can print one for you. I don't know anyone with one, although Jeffrey probably has one up at his workshop. Probably, most probably. <laughs> I'll have to do him a favour and he might do one in return. Well, JP Woodwork hey. has just donated two pounds. Yay! Thank you very much, JP Woodwork. You must tell me your name. I, I, guys, you probably have in the past and it's another one of those occasions where I can't remember. Now this is actually something to do with the joints, so it's not, but it, it could be. Um, 
to accelerate joints up into the, the position where they get made in the live stream, you'll be able to um, boost their point balance by making a donation. So it's a bit unfair, I suppose, but that's the way I was thinking of doing it. I'll probably get one donation a month, uh, so it's not going to make an awful lot of difference. So anyway, on the plane, if you've got any ideas that would uh, be useful, like maybe putting it in a vat of, bar, uh, vat of acid, certainly got to do something with the handle. You don't need to put it in acid. Hmm? You don't need to put it in acid. Well, it depends what finish you'd like on it, really. Because like I say, I want it as a user. I don't, I'm not bothered about its value. I want it to work well. So yes, I want a polished sole, but do I want polished sides and tops on a smoother? Don't know. It's about 10 minutes work on sandpaper. Yeah, but do I want that finish on the side? <laughs> Paul says, don't you dare. <laughs> I've got some other ideas as well, which uh, include some electricity. But uh, anyway, that aside. So this will be the smallest metal smoother I'll have. I have restored one in the past. I did it for a, a Japanese subscriber who wanted one sent over from the UK and I picked one up for him restored it a bit and sent it over to Japan so I have touched the number three before uh, but this will be for me so whole new experience anyway it's going to look different when it's finished I, mean, I do like I don't know if you can see it on there I like the paintwork on it I mean, that's nice, isn't it? Gives it a certain classiness. You always got to have a bit of handle paint. So, anyway. Look at it now and you'll see what that looks like in, who knows, a month or two. I shan't be rushing it. Oh, I can't get good Japaning anymore. No, um, have I got my? I don't have my number four in here. I had some really old um, Japaning paint, which belonged to my either my father or my grandfather. It was in the garage, and I made a lovely job on uh, on an old plane. It looked the business. You couldn't tell the difference. I'm just saying in the chat that I did, uh, well, my friend, uh, Greg Ricketts, who's um, he's quite well known in the plate collecting world. He did several courses on um, Japaning ah. recently, and he restores plates, uh, you know, to really, really high quality. And um, he, he has, he seems to have cracked uh, the Japaning sort of thing again. I don't know if the courses are still running, but uh, I can send send you a link if you're interested, Mitch. Yeah, do. I'll, I'll have a look. I don't think I'll be going that route on this one, but um, it's always interesting to learn something new, something different. I'm going to dare you to paint that plain purple. Well, I know you like purple, but I, I really don't. Or hot pink. I do like hot pink. Yeah. And Woodwork, Woodwork Learners also said purple or bright yellow. Paul said purple Japaning. I think the general consensus here is purple. Uh, well, just as well I'm in control, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to take suggestions, but uh, when it comes down to the final choice, if I don't like it... <laughs> But anyway, it's going to be different. At the moment, it's got red paint on it, it's got blue paint on it, it's got uh, plenty of surface rust on it. 
and uh, a lot of dirt. It will be different in, uh, in not too long. Okay folks, well it's, it's cup of tea time for me and I've got a donut tonight as well so I'm not hanging about any longer. Hope you've enjoyed yourself. Ah uh, oh yeah, JP Woodbury, I've just seen your, your message there. You won in the Hallowood 15 contest. Gosh, what a long time ago that was. Jamie, yeah, of course it is. And how's the diamond plate? Is it worn out by now? 2015 to 2021? I'm sure you've worn it out if you've been busy with it. Never purple, excellent. Got someone on my side, Shreddick. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. More power to you. Oh, have I got to pay for hot pink now? <laughs> All right, I really must go. I'm desperate for my donut and my cup of tea. It's been uh, it's been fun, everyone, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheerio.